Brighton is considering its own proposals for the destruction of Russian military facilities deep in the territory of the Russian Federation as part of the Victory Plan. As the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, Alexander Sirsky, reported, he had a telephone conversation with the Chief of the Defence Staff of Great Britain, Admiral Sir Tony Radakin, during which he informed him about the situation at the front. During the conversation, they discussed strikes on Russian military facilities. Separately, we discussed the possibilities of hitting the enemy's military targets in operational and strategic depth. The British side is currently working on its own proposals to implement this victory plan, Sirsky said. Sirsky also drew the attention of the British side to violations of international humanitarian law by Russia, war crimes and attacks on critical infrastructure of Ukraine, as well as massive bombing of civilian objects. According to Sirsky, the key areas of cooperation between Ukraine and Britain are the supply of military equipment, training of personnel, and increasing the efficiency of the use of high-tech weapons. Recently, the USA had a telephone conversation with the chief of the defense staff of Great Britain, during which the possibility of strikes on the Russian Federation is discussed. Ukraine has the right to defend itself against Russian aggression, which includes strikes on legitimate targets located within Russian territory, according to former NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg. We are having debates on this matter among allies, but we must always be aware that this is a brutal war, a blatant violation of all international rules and an attempt by Russia to establish control over Ukraine. Ukraine has the right to defend itself. This right includes attacking legitimate military targets on Russian territory, he said. According to Stoltenberg, Russia should not deceive Ukraine's Western partners with threats. From the very beginning, Russia has claimed that Western arms supplies are unacceptable. But we delivered arms. We cannot stop our support because of Russian threats, the former NATO Secretary General said. For several months, Ukraine has been seeking permission from its Western partners to strike deep into Russian territory with foreign weapons. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has consistently emphasized the need for long-range capabilities. For the first time, Ukrainian fighters fired two Atakms missiles at the military training ground where soldiers of the occupying Russian army were trained in the Zaporizhia region. As a result, a large number of people died at the training ground where there were dozens of soldiers. It is reported that this is at least the sixth time in the last eight months that Russian troops have gathered in the open air to conduct exercises. The number of personnel losses is not specified, but the Forbes publication notes in its article that they could be catastrophic. It should be noted that the attack with Atakms missiles is carried out by means of HIMARS rocket volley. So far, the invaders' training grounds have been repeatedly hit by MLRS missiles through this system. Illegal Starlink terminals from the American company SpaceX are contributing to Russia's advance on the battlefield in Ukraine, particularly during the seizure of Volodar Donetsk Oblast. The Washington Post reported this with reference to the Ukrainian military. According to the Washington Post, the Ukrainian army used to have a significant advantage over the numerically superior and better armed Russians in terms of internet connection via Starlink terminals, but the Russians now use it as well. Starlink's illegal terminals let Russians use satellite internet to increase coordination during assaults, launch more drone sorties, and strike Ukrainian troops with precise artillery attacks. A prohibition on the sale of American electronics to Moscow includes Starlink terminals, which allow commanders to monitor the battlefield in real time using drones and provide secure communication between military units. According to the Ukrainian military, there is a booming illicit market for selling Starlink terminals to Russian soldiers on the front lines, and their proliferation has played a significant role in Russia's recent successes. Six Ukrainian soldiers and officers from separate units in Donetsk Oblast told the Washington Post that Russia has closed the technology gap, making its forces more cohesive and increasing the frequency and accuracy of attacks. 
an officer from the 72nd Mechanized Brigade, which had been defending the Volodar area since 2022 and was recently forced to retreat, highlighted Russia's deployment of the Starlink system as well as a lack of troops and weapons as contributing factors to Volodar's surrender. According to the Washington Post, Starlink terminals appeared on Russian positions throughout the year, but their impact has expanded significantly in recent months as Russian offensive forces utilize them to coordinate attacks. Ukrainian military operation reconnaissance drones near Novohrodivka reported seeing Starlink equipment in Russian positions beginning last month. The Pentagon has previously indicated that the US and Ukrainian governments are cooperating with SpaceX to prevent Russia's illicit use of Starlink terminals in occupied Ukraine. SpaceX stated that terminals are deactivated when utilized by a sanctioned or unauthorized party. The Pentagon and SpaceX declined to provide specifics about the US operations, such as how many illegal terminals used by Russian soldiers have been taken offline. Although Russian organizers and individuals are not permitted to sell Starlink, a grey market has emerged, fueled by strong demand from military and private purchasers. The Washington Post examined four of the many Russian websites allowing direct sales for the special military operation as the Kremlin refers to the war against Ukraine. The majority of terminals are sold through Telegram and start in Moscow Oblast before moving on to the front line. To activate the device, customers may supply a foreign phone number, email address and bank account to pay a monthly subscription charge, pushing suppliers to seek out people ready to lend their personal information.